General Mark Caputo uh, of The Bulwark to discuss his newest piece about Trump's campaign's plans for Kamala Harris now that she's the presumptive Democratic nominee. Before we get to the news, let's just set up uh, how this all transpired because two weeks ago they did, they were still planning for Biden to be the nominee. Obviously, that's changed. Give us a little bit of sense of how Trump World has approached this entire weird transition. Well, at first they were like, look, Joe Biden is the nominee and he's not going to step aside. And there's basically no mechanism to force him to step aside. But as sort of the unprecedented amount of pressure got applied to Biden, uh, probably about two weeks ago, basically a week after that terrible debate for Biden, great debate for Trump, they yeah. started the Trump campaign to sort of retool and say, OK, let's augment our opposition research book and Kamala Harris, whom they were going to attack anyway as sort of a means to an end to say, oh, she's the real power behind the throne or the caretaker right. or whatever, and use her as a cudgel to attack Biden. Uh, so they realized well, she's probably going to be the nominee for them, and you know we need to prepare for that. And what, di what, what different steps are they not taking? You're going to see, and they're not quite doing it yet, them just totally elevate her as the person to attack. And it's not just attacking her as a, a steward, a caretaker, uh, owning the Biden administration le a legacy on you know, the economy, inflation, on immigration. But there's also a look at her more specifically in her past as a district attorney, as a prosecutor. And here is where the Trump campaign sees fertile ground, according to its own research. They uh, believe that you know, she can be uh, properly, let's say, framed. Uh, you know, framed actually, as that's sort of a loaded word, <laughs> defined. <laughs> Uh, she can be properly, you know, she can be well defined as being too liberal. As a prosecutor, there have been a few cases where uh, in the, the Trump campaign's estimation and Republican estimation, uh, she was a, a little too much of a liberal prosecutor and bad guys got away or bad guys benefited uh, from her decisions. And one of the people in the Trump campaign uh, referenced the 1988 Willie Horton attack ads against Michael Dukakis in the presidential race there and said that she's got, quote, several Willie Hortons. And so we're going to expect to see those. So we, we should set it up. Willie Horton, for the uninitiated, was a prisoner um, in Massachusetts who was furloughed when Michael Dukakis was governor of Massachusetts. He went out of prison uh, on this program um, that had let out a number of people. Uh, statistically, uh, many of them did not commit heinous crimes, but Horton did uh, upon furloughing. And oh, yeah. that was used against Dukakis by the Bush campaign to <clears throat> paint him and portray him as uh, soft on crime, uh, even almost a danger if you were to enter the White House because criminals would be roaming the streets uh, because he was so, uh, <laughs> so soft on crime. Bush and Dukakis on crime. Bush supports the death penalty for first-degree murderers. Dukakis not only opposes the death penalty, he allowed first-degree murderers to have weekend passes from prison. One was Willie Horton, who murdered a boy in a robbery, stabbing him 19 times. Despite a life sentence, Horton received 10 weekend passes from prison. Horton fled, kidnapped a young couple, stabbing the man and repeatedly raping his girlfriend. Weekend prison passes. Dukakis on crime. Uh, Mark, uh, let me just make an observation. The, the sort of diplomatic, gentle way you're even talking about this underscores just how delicate the yeah. turf is yeah. right here uh, is this just going to be mudslinging? And obviously, it's going to get howls of being uh, racist, uh, gendered. Like, oh, yeah. what are what are the what are the uh, elements we're dealing with here? I, all of the above. You know, last night I did a, <laughs> last night I did a CNN hit, and she asked me about like some of the cases, and I went through these long explanations of each one of them. But then again, on the really? other hand, because you know it's complex things, criminal justice cases usually aren't very simple. I mean, one thing about the right. Willie Horton cases is, is actually was simple. Uh, some of these right. other ones uh, with Kamala Harris are a little more complicated. But yeah, we're looking at a race that's going to have just a heavy racial component. I mean, it can't, in part because it's Donald Trump, right? He he has always sort of gone to the line of race and crossed over it or blown it away or crossed whatever. Crossed over it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, Taking a howitzer to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, an A-10 <laughs> warthog. And um, Kamala Harris, the first black vice president. And so th this is just sort of unavoidable stuff. And, you know, not only has you know Trump done that, but... Kamala Harris is her active K high following, which is is quick to to label lots of criticism of her misogynoir, you know, both misogyny yeah. and racism. And so, yeah, we're we're going to see just a lot of this talk that's going to be both subtle and veiled, and perhaps not so subtle and not so veiled. And I guess the ultimate question for us as sort of political reporters or me as a political reporter is like, 
you know, is it going to work and whom is it going to work for? Well, what's your, I mean, I don't, I, we're not in the game know. of predictions, but what's the, so how does the, I guess the, the better way to ask you that question is how does the Trump campaign see it working? So the Trump campaign sees it working in this regard, that, you know, a super majority, you know, more than 60 percent or so of the electorates in the swing states are, are white and swing voters to actually tend to be white. And what they're banking on is the left to sort of overreact, accuse people constantly of racism and then have that sort of eventually ricochet and produce a white backlash, so to speak. Right. And that's sort of the, the, the rawest way to describe, uh, you know, sort of what they're expecting. As I'd written the week before regarding the selection of J.D. Vance as a running mate, one of the untold stories in the media was that the number one cause of Donald Trump's loss by demographic group in 2020 was the loss of white male support for right. Donald Trump, right? That just fell off a cliff. And so he wants to claw them back, and he's aware of that. So there's going to be more talk about race, both dog whistle, bullhorn, foghorn, or whatever horn. All right. And then finally, uh, speak briefly about the Harris side of these, uh, of this equation. $100 million raised in 36 hours. <laughs> crazy. Uh, $150 million pledged to the Super PAC. Mm -hmm. The stat that I kind of just shocked me was not totally the, the actual total. 1.2 million unique donors, uh, yeah. and some of them first, a good chunk of that first time donors. I mean, that is, uh, that's just not anything we've ever seen before. It isn't. And the question is, to what degree are we seeing sort of a refulfillment of the hopes of Democrats from the yeah. Obama years of the ascended electorate, right? A younger electorate, a, a less white electorate, a more progressive, more liberal, less conservative electorate. A lot of people started to doubt whether that stuff was true after Hillary Clinton lost, right? Yeah. And in the Trump years, now you know we'll sort of see. And you know, for the for the Harris campaign, th there's no way to avoid just the issue of race because it's just kind of part of her, more part of her identity that's observable in you know our political system. But that's deeply attractive to a lot of voters. And yeah. how? How that plays out, I, I am I am not sure. I think I think people reading the current polls right now saying, "Oh, Donald Trump is uh, beating Harris, so, you know, by as much if not more than Joe Biden." Uh, you know that that could change. I, I those numbers that you said, those dollars, and the amount of social media traffic we're seeing, the amount of mainstream media buzz that's coming about Kamala Harris uh, certainly indicates that she could be. I'm not saying she is, could be a game changer. I I agree with that. All right, Mark, thanks a bunch, man. Keep out there. Stay safe. Don't get yourself in trouble. Okay. I never do. I'm always framed. Oh, yeah. Set up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mark Caputo, thank you very much. Read his piece on the bulwark. Take care, oh, guys. Thanks.